you can see that the clock is paused at 21 hour 59 minutes and 40 seconds you can see the three buttons here this is the reset this is the start and this is the stop or pause button now i press the start button see it starts from the same point and onward see it continues from that point now it's at uh, 47 48 49 50 seconds now i again press the stop button see the clock pauses again at 21 59 and 55 seconds now i again press the start button it continues from the same point like this you can see that it has just our stopwatch has continued from the same point i will again pause or stop the clock like this i press the stop button see it pauses wherever i press the button now what i do is that i will press the reset button once the clock is paused only then you can press the reset button now i press this leftmost button to reset the clock see all the values go back to 0000, 0, 0, 0. now again press the center button it starts all over again see 2 3 4 5 6 i again pause now once the clock is paused now you can reset it i press the reset button again it becomes 000, 0, 0. hello guys welcome to learning microcontrollers so guys in this video i am going to show you how you can make a stopwatch using a pic 16 f 7 a microcontroller using seven segment and no type displays so let's get started so guys this is the four digit seven segment and no type display i'm talking about and we are going to use two of these to make eight digit our stopwatch will have uh, timing for up to 99 hour 59 minute and 60 second maximum of time so you can go up to 99 hour with a stopwatch so we will need eight digits uh, two for the seconds two for the hours two for the minutes and then two digits to separate the second from the minute and minute from the hours so guys uh, we will connect them like this in this way four and four they will be like eight digits so this will be our first digit second digit then this will be the dash then this will be the mid digits this will be the dash and these two will be the hour digit in this way we will need eight digits so from the top view our seven segment unit that is a four digit seven segment unit looks like this a four digit seven segment unit is easily available in the market but if you can buy a eight digit seven segment unit then you may buy it that will be even better but at my place i can only find the four digit one so i'm going to use a four digit one so from the top view it looks like this and it has total of 12 pins six at the back at the top side six at the back at the bottom side so let me show you how they are labeled as so at the top left at the back you have the digit one pin then a segment f segment digit two pin digit three pin b segment then at the bottom left you have e segment pin then d segment pin dot pin c pin g pin and finally the digit four pin now guys these are only four digits while to make a stopwatch with timing up to 99 hours we will also need we will need four more digits so we will add another seven segment display but before that let me tell you this digit is the digit one if whenever in case of a seven segment node you will connect this digit one digit to the five volt supply or you will send a one through the microcontroller to this pin then this digit will get unable but in case of a seven segment cathode it's opposite either you will connect this digit one pin with the ground or you will send a zero from the microcontroller only then this digit will get unable so in our case we are using a seven segment anode so this digit will only be enabled when we send a one to it from our one microcontroller or either we connect it to the five volt supply directly so guys the next digit is a digit two pin digit two corresponding to this digit two pin then this pin corresponds to this digit and digit four corresponds to this digit if you hold it like this now guys we will need another of this module so this will give us total eight digits now this is the digit 1, 2, 3, 4 for the next module but I am going to label them as digit 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now let me label the second module as well. So as you can see that again this module will have total of 12 pins, uh, 6 at the top back. So the at the top back left pin is the digit 1, A, F, digit 2, digit 3, B and at the bottom left we have E pin, D pin, dot pin, C pin, G pin and finally the digit 4 pin. Now guys I name this digit as a digit 5 instead of digit 1 i name it digit 5 because we will connect them and then we will program them in such a way that this will become the digit 5 this is digit 6 digit 7 and then we have the digit 8 like this 
so guys our digit 4 here is basically the digit 8 digit 7 here uh, digit 3 here for the second segment will act as a digit 7 and digit 6 will be the digit 2 and digit 1 will correspond to digit 5 like this but in case if you can find a single 8 digit 7 segment display in the market that will be better you will have already this labeled up so in our case we will label it like this so for the second module just everything will be the same other than this that you, have, you yourself have to name the digit 1 as 5 digit 2 as 6 digit 3 as 7 and digit 4 as 8 so we will have d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 d7 d8 now d7 and d8 will be for the second then this will be a dash to separate the second from the mint d4 and d5 are for the mint and then we will have a dash and then d2 and d1 will be for the hour so in this way all of the eight digits will be utilized in the stopwatch so guys this is our pic 16 fa double seven a microcontroller having 40 pins it's a dip version again guys this is our four digit seven segment display let me label it for you at the top left at the back you have digit one then a f digit two digit three B then at the bottom left you have E D dot C G and finally the digit 4 pin. Then guys uh, D1 this is a digit 1 correspond to this pin, digit 2 this pin, digit 3 this pin and digit 4 this pin. Now guys uh, D, these 4 digits are not enough for our stopwatch. we will need 8 digits so we add another module and we label it further like D5, D6, D7, D8. So digit 1 of the second module will be our digit 5 digit 2 will be d6 digit 3 will be d7 and digit 4 will be d8 now again uh, the pin labeling is the same at the top back we have digit 1 pin a pin f pin digit 2 digit 3 and p pin now at the bottom left we have e pin d pin dot pin c pin d pin and the digit 4 pin now guys the next thing is that we relabel them our digit 4 is now the digit 8 corresponding to this pin digit 7 will correspond to this digit and this will be the d3 of the second module will be our digit 7 d2 of the second module will be our digit 6 and d1 of the second module will be our digit 5 like this now guys let's do the connections for that you will connect the a pin of the first module with the a pin of the second module like this then you connect the b pin of the first module with the b pin of the second module like this then connect the c pin of the first module with the c pin of the second module like this then connect the D pin of the first module with the D pin of the second module like this. Then you connect the E pin of the first module with the E pin of the second module like this. Then guys you connect the F pin of the first module with the F pin of the second module like this. Then guys you connect the G pin of the first module with the G pin of the second module like this. Then guys you connect the dot pin of the first module with the dot pin of the second module. Now guys in this way our 8, 7 segment pins are, are shorted like this. And you will not short the digit pins d1 d2 d3 d4 and of the first uh, module and d1 d3 d2 d3 uh, d1 d2 d3 and d4 of the second module corresponding to d5 d6 d7 and d8 digit you will not uh, short them they will be as it is now guys the next thing is we need to connect the seven segment pins with the pic microcontroller so, so you are gonna need 8 into 220 ohm resistor you can use a 100 ohm resistor and up to uh, 330 ohm resistor but the most recommended one is a 220 ohm resistor. Now guys for the A pin connect it, uh, connect this shorted pin uh, both the A pin or both the modules to one end of this 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor send it to the pin number B0. I am going to use the port B for the 7 segment and port D for the digits. You can use any other port having 8 pins. So in our project we have port B available. So I am going to use the port B for the 7 segment. Now guys for the B pin both the B pins of both the seven segments send it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor just send it to the pin number B1 like this now guys for the C pin uh, connect both the C pins of both the module together and send it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor send it to the pin number B2 like this now guys for the D pin Connect it to the one end of the connect D pin of both the modules to one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of this 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B3 like this. Now, guys, for the E pin, connect the E pin of both the modules together. Then you will send it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this. Then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor, send it to the pin number B4 like this. 
then guys for the f pin you connect f pin of both the modules together then you send it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor send it to the pin number b5 like this now guys for the g pin you connect it you connect the g pin of both the modules together and then you send it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor send it to the pin number b6 like this now finally for the dot segment you connect the dot segment of both the segments together then you send it to the one end of the 220 ohm resistor like this then from the other end of the 220 ohm resistor send it to the pin number b7 like this now guys here you can see that 0 correspond to a 1 to b 2 to c 3 to d and 4 to e and so on you have to maintain this scheme even if you use the 4d for this uh, uh, seven segment uh, wires then you have to maintain 0 for a 1 for b 2 for c because when we are going to use the seven segment editor tool in the micro c for pick then we will we need this else if you don't don't do this then you have to send digits manually you cannot use the seven segment editor tool of the micro c for pick so it's up to you so the next thing is now we will connect the digits pin for the digits pin you do not need uh, a resistor so you will connect the digits pin directly with the pick microcontroller now guys for the digit pin 1 that is the d1 of the first module I will connect it to the pin number D0 of the PIC 16 f 7 a microcontroller. D0 is basically the pin number 18. So, digit 1 pin will go to the pin number D0 of the PIC like this. Now, for the digit 2 pin, I am going to connect it to the pin number D1 of the PIC, that is pin number 20. Now, for the digit pin 3 pin, I am going to connect it to the pin number 21 of the PIC, that is pin number D2 and it is pin number 21 like this. And for the digit 4 pin of the first module, I will connect it to the 1 or to the D3 pin of the PIC 16F7A and that is pin number 22 of the PIC. Now guys for the digit 5 that is the digit 1 pin of the second module I am going to connect it to the pin number uh, or to the D4 pin of the PIC 16F7A microcontroller like this that is pin number 27. Now guys for the digit uh, 2 of the second module which is digit 6 in our case I will connect it to the D5 pin that is pin number 28 of the PIC 16 f 7 a Now for the digit 3 of the second module that is in our case is the digit 7 for the for our clock. I will connect it to the pin number D6 of the PIC and now finally for the digit 8 I will connect it to the pin number D7 that is pin number 30 of the PIC like this. In this way our 7 segment is connected and our digit pins are connected. Now this is ready for programming. Now other than this in our stopwatch we are also going to need uh, some buttons so we will also initialize them before that let me tell you how the screen will work now guys take a look here and digit 8 and digit 7 are our second digits so digit 8 is the unit digit for the second and digit 7 is a tenth digit then we will have a dash here to separate the second from the uh, mint so digit 6 will act as a dash then guys digit 5 and 4 are for the mint digit 5 is the unit and digit 4 is the tenth digit now again we will have a separation this dash this will separate the mints from the hour. Now this is our hour unit digit 2 and digit 1 is the hour 10th unit uh, tenth digit. So digit 2 is the hour unit digit and digit 1 is our 10th digit. In this way our stopwatch will work. Our second will go from 0 to 60. This will increment the mint then it will go from 0 to 60 then it will increment the hour and our maximum hour that we can go for the two digit is the 99 after it goes to the 99 hour then it will start all over again then other than this guys we will also have three push buttons one for starting the stopwatch like in a normal stopwatch you have a start button to start the timing then we have a stop button and then guys we will have a reset button uh, once the clock is started using the start button you can stop it using this button it will also act as a pause you press the uh, stop button it will pause the screen and now if you want to reset the timer without shutting it off and on you can simply press the reset button and it will reset all the values to 000. So these are three buttons are part of every normal stopwatch. So let me show you how to connect them with a pin. As you know each button has two pins. I name the one button of the start uh, for the start button. I name the one pin as start other as VC. Now you can shuffle these two pins because button is not a polar component. You can make this pin VCC this pin start doesn't matter and now guys for the stop button I have one pin VCC one stop and for the reset button I have one pin reset and one VCC you 
will also need 3 10 kilo ohm resistors to connect this button with the pick. 1 10, 10 kilo ohm resistor for each button. Now guys, you short the VCC pin of all 3 buttons together. Then you send them to the common VCC pin of the PIC16 FA77A microcontroller to give them the 5 volt. Now guys, for the start pin of the first button, connect to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then guys, from the same pin, you will take out your output. You can use any available digital input output pin of the PIC16 FA77A microcontroller for this. I am going to use a pin number 15, that is pin number C0. Now guys, for the second button, that is the stop button. Uh, you connect the stop pin to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor like this, the second 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Then from the same pin, you will take out your output. You can use any available digital input output pin. I am going to use a pin number C1 for this. Now guys, for the reset pin, that is third button, uh, connect it to the one end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor like this. Now from the same pin, you will take out your output. You can use any available digital input output pin. I am going to use a pin number C2 for this. And then guys, the other end of the 10 kilo ohm resistor, all three resistors, you short them and then you send it to the common ground like this. In this way guys, our connections are completed. Now we can move on to the hardware. So let me introduce you to the hardware before we get to the programming first. So guys, this is the hardware I have here. These are the three push buttons. This is our eight digit seven segment display and note type. And at the back is the PIC16 FA77A and the PICKET3. So this is our simple hardware. Now let's get to the programming. So let me zoom in. This is a micro C for PIC programming tool. Uh, you, uh, this is version 7.2.0. You can upgrade to 7.5.0 as well. It's available. Click on new, new project. This window pops up. New project wizard. Click on next. Write the name of the project. Stopwatch. Learning microcontroller tutorial like this and the crystal I'm going to use is 20 megahertz like this. Click on next and finish. Now guys, this window pops up before you do anything else, press control S to save your work like this. Now guys, first of all, we initialize our seven segment port. So write down Chris. B is equals to 0 cross FF. Uh, why FF? Because in case of a node, uh, our all the segment pins must have 1 by default. If they, if you give the, uh, them a 0 by default, they all will turn on. So to make them off, initially they, oh sorry, uh, for the test B, it will be 0 cross 0, 0 because it's an output port. Now for the port B, that is our initial state, we will have 0 cross FF. So, like in case of an Arduino, you write pin mode output. So, in case of a pick, we use a tris command. So, tris b equals to 0 means output and 1 means input. So, the whole 7 segment port is output. Now, here we are going, going to give it the initial state. Like in case of an Arduino, you write digital right, low or high. So, f means it's high like 1. It's 1. Whole port is turned high because in case of a, a node, we need to make the port high, high initially. If the port is low initially, then it means that the seven segments are on. In case of a node, whenever you send a zero to a seven segment uh, segment, any seven segment LED, this turns them, them on. So by default, it must be one. So one means it's on or it's off. It's off. And zero means it's off, on. So by default, it must be one because one means it's off. Now give some initialization delay. Uh, 20 will do fine for the one time loop. Now guys, the next thing is we initialize our digit pins. So for that we have trace D, port D equals to 0 B, send it in the binary 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now guys, these 8 digits represent 8 pins of the port D. This pin on the right, 0 on the right represents the pin number D0. This is D1, this is D2 and up to D7. So they are total 8 digits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8 like this. So this is how you can also initialize the pins. You can also do it here as well. It is a more convenient way. Now for the initial state, write down port D equals to copy this. Now initially all the LEDs must be off. So in case of a, a node, in case of a node, 0 means disable. So 
initially all the digits are off so when we will make it one it means the digit is unable so in our case we have a node so it, the digit must be disabled by default so we send only a zero to all the pins these all the pins this is our digit one then this is digit two digit three digit four five six and up to seven eight because we have connected digit one to pin number d0 digit two to pin number d1 and up to d7 so 0 to d7 means 0 to 1 to 8 digits so guys the next thing is we have three buttons so we initialize them trace c dot f0 equals to 1 1 means it's an input now now this is the difference see here we gave 0 the seven segments were output here too we gave 0 because the digit pins were output now the button will give an input so we made it 1 uh, so like in case of an arduino you write pin mode input now give the initial state port c dot f0 equals to 0. Now why this 0? Because uh, our resistor 10 kilo ohm resistor is connected at the grounding end. You can see that in the presentation this 10 kilo ohm resistor is at the grounding end. Whenever the resistor is at the grounding end it means that the button will send a 1. So this means the button will send a 1 whenever it will be pressed. So initially it must be 0. Because when it will be pressed, it will send a 1. So, initially it must be 0. So, this is our first button. Now, initialize the rest of the two buttons. So, this is our start button. I write it start at C0. Sorry. Now, this is our C1. Make it 1. This is the stop button. Stop. And then we will have our reset button. Copy this. And this is the reset button at C dot F2. We have our three buttons now. Now guys, before going to the forever loop, first of all, we will need to initialize an array of digits to be displayed on the seven segment. Seven segment cannot display, uh, like we cannot display one, two, three, four on it on our own. We have to create some special integers for this. For that purpose, I write display and take an integer because we need character from 0 to 9 so this will be an integer array from 10, of 10 digits 10 digits means 0 to 9 so 0 to 9 is basically 10 digits if you count them so starting from here first of all we will write a 0 here to, for that purpose go to this tools library select this 7 segment editor and here you have this tool make a 0 on the screen once you make a 0 zoom back in take a look here it says common anode in the decimal form it's 192 you copy it and you paste it here now guys this display zero if i write port b display zero it will send a zero on the screen because 192 is a zero in case of common anode on the seven segment display now guys i told you that you have to follow a scheme here so let me show you what i meant by that like here 0 is for A, 1 is for B, 2 is for C, 3 is for D. You can change the port, but you cannot change the sequence. If you change the sequence, you will not be able to use this tool. This small tool, you will not be able to use it if you change the sequence. Then you have to send these commands manually. So now make a 1. To get a 1, we will need a complete array from 0 to 9. So for the common node, it's a 207 for the 1. So write down 1. Now make a 2 here. So this is our 2, it's for the common node is 164, now we need a 3, now make a 4 here, it's 153, now make a 5 here. For the 5 for common node is 146. Now make a 6 here. Now for the 6 for the common node it's 130. Now make a 7 here. For the 7 for the common node is 216. Now make a 8 here. All the LEDs will be on for the 8. 
so what we get here is 128 for the common end note copy paste it now make a 9 here for the 9 just turn off this LED here you go this is our 9 it's 144 so guys these are 0 to 9 digits now here this array like display array contains all the digits from 0 to 9 display 0 means display a 0 on the node display 1 means display a 1 so display 9 means display a 9 on the subsequent node in this way guys our node is initialized now we will need three variables which will store the time we initialize them integer second integer mint and integer hour like this now guys what i do is that i go down and here i write the, give them the initial values like second equals to zero by default whenever the code runs these digits all the values must be zero and hour equals to zero second mint and hour equals to zero now we go to our forever loop we write here while one starting here forever loop ending here now first of all guys before doing anything else we need to display the digits on the screen for that purpose first of all we will take the initial state of the digits this is the initial state of the digit whichever digit we want to enable we will enable that digit so this is our digit 8 so i enable it now on this digit i write the unit digit of the second i write port b that is the port at which the seventh segment is installed port b equals to display this array whatever is this array display display what display whatever the values in the second because it is the unit digit of second i am writing on the digit 8 as from the presentation percentage of 10 now why this percentage or remainder symbol because let me show you why now here you see that this is our digit for the second suppose this is our second digit here okay now this digit can maximum hold 0 to 9 uh, digits so whenever it will go from 0 to 9 then there will be a need of it's transferring the control to the next digit so the, here the remainder will be taken it will take the remainder and it will send the value to the next digit then 10 11 12 13 it will keep on going once it reaches the 99 then it again it has to transfer the control again you will use the remainder symbol so that's why we use the remainder sample that is only to transfer the control to the next digit so the control will be transferred from unit to next digit that is a tenth digit but if you only have one digit zero to nine then you will not need this mode sample now guys uh, we have displayed our value we give some delay this delay is important give some delay so the value remains stable it will be five five will be good now guys the next thing is we need to go turn the led off we have to disable it because we are using the multiplexing technique where we will enable one digit one by one and display a value then move on to the next digit at a very high speed now this is our unit digit for the second now we write the tenth digit for the second for that just uh, disable the unit digit and enable the tenth digit like this d7 and then you add here divided by 10 second divided by 10 this will be our tenth digit it will be displayed and again uh, bring the digits back to the uh, normal form now we comment it as unit unit oh, sorry second digits now i uh, copy this and now we display the mints digits i write mints mint digits for that copy this here now as told you earlier d6 digit 6 is our dash that is the separation between second and min so no need to play with this what we need here is that uh, we disable this digit and this is our 10 digit for the second and then this is the dash digit and this is this is a digit 7 a digit 8 7 6 5 this is our mint unit digit so i make it one i enable the mint digit like this and then I send here the unit digit of mint. Whatever is in the mint will be displayed here. Now I copy this here. And then again the value is displayed and again the digit gets disabled. Now I copy it here. Now again I disable this digit and I enable it the tenth digit of the mint. I make it mint. So it will display the mint like this. 
now the mint will be displayed now the mint digit ends here now the mint digits had ended i copy this for the our digit now these are our mint digits they will be displayed see that at digit 8 digit 7 digit 6 is the separation and digit 5 is the unit digit and here too you can see that digit 8 digit 7 digit 6 is the separation digit 5 is the unit mint digit here this and then we have 10 mint digit and the 10 digit is displayed and then again it goes back to the initial state the digit is disabled now we go for the hour digit for the hour digit just paste this like this make it our our digits and here again you disable the tenth digit oh sorry disable the tenth digit like this I simply copy paste it here like this now disable this digit and here you know that this digit is a separation between mint and hour and this is the unit tenth digit so make it one and write it over here whatever is in the hour will be displayed again here and after displaying the unit digit of the hour it will again get disabled now again disable this and enable the tenth hour digit that is our d1 digit 1 and then the digit 1 that is our our tenth digit will be displayed here now guys we also need to display the dashes for that purpose you go back to the tools and you go to this seven segment editor here you make whatever you want to display as a separation so for the separation purpose i display these three dashes like this so for that it's common load value is 182 first of all i write in the comment separation digit i write separation and and in the center just paste uh, copy paste any of this and we will amend it here now our separation digits are two we have disable all the other digits and let me zoom in now the separation digit you know that we have two separation digits one separating the second from the mint another separating the mint from the hour so these two are our second digits then this is the separation digit make it one then these two our mint digits then this is the separation digit make it one so the separation digit what we write here this 182 182 are these three dashes so just paste the 182 here so 182 will be displayed on the screen for the separation so we display the separation digit after every cycle so after the second digits are displayed here we display the separation after the mint digits are displayed we display the separation here now after the hour digits are displayed we display the separation here now let's build this code and see right now our counter is not working so our time is just 0 0 0 so the screen must display 0 0 0 so we zoom out let me build the code this is our seventh segment of picket 3 programming tool i click on write the new code is being written let's get to the hardware so guys it's sometime difficult to see the digits on the screen because they stutter too much see the 000 is being displayed so it's working fine now uh, let me add this uh, protective glass so you can see the digits a bit better so it will help you to see these digits better see that as uh, because it's problem with the camera not with the eye with normal eye it's pretty clear but with the camera it's not that clear so i am using this protective glass on it it's just a translucent piece of plastic so you can see that our code is working fine the digits are being displayed so let's start the counter so first of all after the forever loop starts you write here second equals to second plus one so second digits gets incremented now after all this code starts you use a do while loop here now you make do starting here and then the do while loops ends here while and give the ending back into to the do while loop and for how long this loop should continue until the second is until the second is less than equal to 59 why 59 because in a do while loop one run is 
compulsory whenever you enter the do for loop it will run all this code one at one compulsory so it means that we need to cancel that one so that's cancelled so we are left with just 59 else we were to use 60 you can use the for loop as well once the loop is over it will send the second to zero now second becomes zero for the next run and now the mint digit starts mint equals to mint plus one because after every 60 second mint will increment by one now the mint has incremented we will need another loop so we write another do by loop do while now this one for the mint starting here and ending here write while now write if mint is less than equal to 59 then mint will also become zero this means that mint has become zero after running for 60 time now the hour will become one hour has increased hour equals to hour plus one like this now the hour has increased now we will need another loop for the maximum value of the hour do starting here and ending here while hour write down the condition for the while loop hour is hour is less than equal to 59 or oh, sorry 99 because the maximum hour that we can go is 99 for the two digit so this will be 99 so we our stop was maximum time is 99 after this has reached we write another condition if hour is greater than equal to 99 greater than or okay we make it just greater than if hour has become greater than 99 then what should happen it will turn hour to 0 hour will become 0 hour equal to 0 second equal to 0 and mint equal to 0 it means it will bring the whole counter back to 0 that it will start all over again now let's build this code and see what happens okay we have an error here let's see okay let's debug this error so we have a do while for the second okay we had given a space between these condition you cannot give a space here so less than equal to see again the space you cannot give a space here see now it's built you cannot give a space between less than equal to symbol so let's build this and i write this it's built i click on write okay the new code is being written let's get to the hardware let us write the new code see that the counter has started 0 1 2 3 this is our seconds seconds are incrementing at a very small speed we have not set the timing we are just test running it see that 48 once this digit that is second digit reaches 60 the mint digit gets incremented so let me speed increase the speed by manually giving the initial value so we give the initial value so we can see the hour digit getting incremented here mint is equal to 59 like this so this will cause the 59 and after that it will become 60 and we see do the hour digit also increase then we set the timings so i go back i write the new codes so the new code is being written let's wait for it See, it's 59 let's see see the hour got incremented so our code is working perfectly fine now what we need to do is we need to give it proper timings and also add the buttons so first of all we add our buttons before we give we give the times because timing can be adjusted later on so to give the button first of all we have a start button for the start button we have this pin here initially zero we take it place it here if port c dot f0 double equal to 1 now that means the button is pressed if the button is pressed give some debouncing delay delay ms 100 will do fine this is our debouncing delay and again if still after 100 millisecond button is being pressed then it should enter this loop and then when it should end after completing all the values like this see else 
if the button is not pressed then it should display the value on the screen only so to display the value on the screen copy this from here to here copy it till here in the else like this so if the button is not pressed it will keep on displaying the value so let's press the start button it does it work or not the code is built let me zoom out let's run the new code on the hardware okay before that let me uh, we just change something here we bring the counter also back to the original position we change the counter manually see that we made it this now give it back the same zero so it should start from zero so i click on right okay the new code is being written let's get to the hardware and see what happens now the counter will not start until i don't press the start button see it's at zero it is displaying the zero because in the else condition we had given zero now this is the zero button i press it and see what happens see the timer has started now we need to stop the timer or pause it so we add another button that is at b1 to stop and pause the timer this button here c dot f1 you copy it or you can simply use this as well so you copy this and you place it in the second loop go down or first of all you go to the outermost loop that is the hour loop you go in the hour loop this is our hour loop now you write here before you the mint gets zero here this starting here ending here and make it c dot f1 c dot f1 is our uh, stop button and write down inside it break that if this button is break uh, pressed it will break out of the loop and make the debounce uh, delay just 20 100 is too much okay now you copy this now this is our breaking uh, breaking button now you go for the second loop that is the mint loop you also need to place it here above the where you the second before making the second zero so we will have the value saved on the screen if you go after the second zero then this will become zero and your second will be lost so we also need to save the data now go to the second loop and place it somewhere inside it here this now we have our break button also initialized inside all the loops so in ever, whichever loop you are it will break out of it once it's pressed so we build it and we test it let's write the code let me zoom out the new code is being written let's get to the hardware and now this is our start button now this is the stop button the right most i will press this to start and this to stop and this this is the reset button we will program it later now see the code is not started by default so let's first start the code let me adjust the focus okay i press the button here see the code started see the counter the timer is working but we will adjust the timing in the second now i press this button see it stopped it paused now i again press the start button see it continued from where it stopped so this button is doing two things it is also stopping it is also pausing you can also call it a pause button so see it is working fine it at seven now i press the pause button eight nine now this is the tenth mint now again i press the pause button see the code paused where it stopped now i press the start button it will start from the same position like this now this is working fine now we need a reset button to reset the code uh, like we do should not shut down the whole system to reset the code just there should be a button now this is the reset button at c dot f2 now you go to the else loop here at the bottom after the separation ends you write down here this c dot f2 if the uh, reset button is pressed what it should do it should bring everything back to the initial state so that is second equals to zero mint equals to zero and hour equals to zero but the reset button should not work in the normal mode it will only work when the code is paused so that is also met so let's build the code 
it's built let's write the code let's get to the hardware to see do our reset button works let's see let the code write okay the new code is written i press the start button okay the start button is pressed the code has started let me adjust the focus see the code is working fine 3 4 now i pause the code the code oh this is the pause button the right one the code is paused i start it started from there again now i will reset the code once it reaches 11 minute let it reach now the code is paused now i press this third button this button now this is a reset button i press it see it gets to zero i press the start button now it starts all over again see that that's what the reset button will do you don't have to shut down the stopwatch to reset the value see i press the stop button once the code is stopped inside the after pressing the stop button you will press the reset button it will reset the value like this now guys we need to add proper delays to make it a one second so to make it one second we have to go to the main loop where we are running our second counter now here starting from here second digit to the last separation in this loop here till here oh, sorry till where the, here till here from here to here in this loop the delay must not increase 1000 so the delay value must be just equal to 1000 by total you have to manage all these delays and give a value of 1000 to make it one second now to do that you first of all count how many delays you have here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 times 5 second delays so open the calculator So you can use some math here so this is the calculator here so i write we have nine nine times five five delay so we divide the 1000 divided by nine so we can get equal values so it is like a triple one for approximately a second you can play with the code and this will do fine so i make all of these delays equal to triple one triple one triple one it will approximately become a second triple one triple one triple one triple one now here i go back to the calculator you can see that we have point one as well so I multiply, let me clear, 0 0.1 multiplied by 9 times equals to, it is a 0 0.9, it is like equal to 1, so approximately we make it 112 like this. Now I build this code and I zoom out and I burn this code again. I click on write. Okay, the new code is being written, now the time will be exactly 1 second. So I start the code, see the code has started, see we are getting exactly one second of delay now. Now you can check your normal watch, it is one second, see, but it is very slow. We have to increase the speed for that purpose, what we are going to do is that we will divide this further into terms, see, we will divide this code further into terms. Now to divide it into the terms, what we do is that we take like 10 terms, we initialize another variable like int term int term and now what we do is that we go down and here we write turn equals to turn plus 1 and we take another do while loop do starting from here and ending 
right here above here like this it will end here and what we give the out condition is like while do while if turn is less than equal to 9 less than equal to 9 means it's like 10 it will divide everything by 10 so when we divide this by 10 we get only 11 make it 11 now it will repeat 11 time but it, it, it is the same thing uh, but it will divide this in 11 times like we will get 11 blinks now in one second we are just increasing the blinks you can even make the turn 1000 as well divided by 1000 you can play with the code i will give you this code so we make it 11 so it will be like 10 tons this will greatly increase our delay because it is like we are now blinking 10 times in one second so it is starting here ending here and then the turn must become zero okay we made a mistake turn equals to zero for the next value and by default when the code starts turn should be equal to zero Okay, let's build this code and see what happens. Now we had made the turn equal to zero as well. So let it build. Let's build. Let's write the code. Okay, the new code is being written. Let's see what happens. Let's get to the hardware. Let me zoom out. See that it had zero because the button is not pressed. Let me adjust the focus. I press the start button. See, now the blinking speed has greatly increased because we increased the turn time now. See, now you can see much better. Now it's much viewable. It's like increasing after every one second. So now to see that the timer is increasing or not, what I do is that I just give it a manual initial condition. Like initially, I make it uh, something like this, that it's initially at... 20 59 mint okay i make it at 21 mint okay let's see uh, how does it changes the value see it adds 48 49 okay now it should become one mint digit will increase 57 58 59 see now the mint has become one you can see that it is because of the focus of camera that you cannot see the seven segment correctly else it's perfectly fine see that it's working fine now we check the hour digit to check the hour digit i simply give it the initial condition like 59 mint and after one minute uh, and some i give it like 40 seconds 59 minute and 40 second by default so whenever it will go above that it will become an hour so let's see what happens i write this code okay the new code is being written let me get to the hardware okay, let me write the new code and let's see what happens See that it had 59 minutes 40 or oh, let me press the start button okay the button is pressed you can see that it's 43 44 the values are increasing 48 49 50 51 2 3 57 58 see now the hour has increased that is what i wanted to show you now see the hour digit has increased in this way it will keep on increasing now we reset the clock i press the, the stop button this is the stop button see it is paused and it is displaying the value now i press the reset button see the value is now at 0, 0.00 i press the start button again see the clock starts over again the stopwatch is started now again after 10 seconds i press the pause button uh, this is the pause button okay it has stopped see that now i again press the start button it started from where where it had stopped 
you can see that and now guys i again pause it see it's paused now i press the reset button it is now reset to 000 i press the start button it starts all over again so guys this is it this is how you will make a stopwatch using this uh, uh, pic 16 f 77 a and some seven segment displays so guys if you want to increase this blinking speed further you can divide the turn time further you can play with the code i will give you the all the micro c files including the hex file uh, in a google drive link which will be in the description of this video you can just open the link and you can look for the uh, you can make the changes to the code and play with the code if you have any questions or queries you can ask them in the comment so guys thank you very much for your time and patience and i hope you learned something from this video uh, now have a nice day until we meet for the next video.